This meeting comes out of the priorities of the Global Trans Research and Advocacy Project, which is a follow-on to the successes that we had with the National Transgender Discrimination Survey in the U.S., which was a joint project of the National Center for Transgender Equality and the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. Its groundbreaking report, Injustice at Every Turn, was published in February of 2011. And since then, we've had many, many policy gains in the U.S. related to the report, and we wanted to share both uh, our grassroots research process, which we think uh, really attributed to the success of the report that trans people uh, crafted these questions, you know, about trans people for trans people, and, um, and we also wanted to share our findings because it's the largest sample of transgender experience anywhere in the world. 6,500 people answered 70 questions about the full range of discrimination that they're experiencing in their lives and we wanted to share both of those things with incredible activists that we're meeting here in Cape Town. People are putting their lives on the line every day just to organize, um, whether it's in, within their organizations or within you know, um, support groups uh, that people don't know about. So there's a challenge there in terms of what kind of laws exist around their identities. Um, and dealing with just everyday obstacles, of, you know, whether it's poverty. Um, and um, so I think that's one of the major things that we've come across. I am identified as a female to male to female or as a shoga or a person who is companion who, who has a relationship with a woman, but they are like friends. It's different for a straight man or for a, for a guy being called as sugar because you are like a female. So it's like that. And sometimes it's very scary because at the office it's, uh, it's terrible. Since even when women see me, they see me as a threat in the, within, because we're working with the community. So the community, once they see me, I have to find clothes in order to fit like a trouser which is big or you have to wear a shirt which doesn't represent because I want to be me but I cannot. I have to fit within the community settings. If for example you're asking about a person's gender or what their gender is, or even the question itself is problematic because some people just feel like you know they're genderless if I may say. There are the people who identify as that. So if you ask a person what's your gender it's still also uh, uh, very restricted. The term transgender is wide, and we always understand it as a wide umbrella term. But some people don't identify with it, and and we have to find way of creating uh, uh, an inclusive space for those people, and and for them to own their gender non-conforming identities within the space. In my case back at home is that. My ID will change and my passport um, subsequently, but my original birth certificate that the state holds on to will not change mm -hmm. because apparently that is an original true record that I was born male. But now with the material changes that have happened, it means the ID and passport need to change and somewhat reflect that out of current. Trans women are worrying, where do I sleep tonight? Where can I get something to eat tonight? For them, toilets, gender-neutral toilets, are not as much as important for now. For them, is survival. How can I survive? There is this religious, masculine, patriarchal aspect within the Egyptian society that, that even doesn't allow you to just express who you are. So, so I, I'll be seeing people here or in Kenya or in any other a place within the African continent expressing themselves in a certain way that is no way could happen in Egypt. It mean, it's a life risk. It's, you could lose your life. If you have a cold, if you have you know, an ache, how do you access the basics of being a, a gender non-conforming person? I think those are the immediate things that people, I think, from the Eastern Cape presentation and also from other regions as well. It's just health is the hugest thing and taking it forward seems insurmountable because it's located within, you know, a broader health crisis in each and every country. 
trans people in Lesotho do need um, their needs are based on health. So if you're taking off health, <laughs> we can touch so many angles. All wants to have boobs. Everyone wants to have but how can I have them? Because if I have them I'll be my mother won't won't accept me. She will cry and then uh, she already cried. Now she'll cry a lot. So that also is my fear. I need to start to do research with transgender women, either in my own capacity or either in my work capacity as the outreach coordinator of gender dynamics, to write out the research where we interview trans women, trans females, to hear what are their needs. Why are they not willing to lead up in this movement? Why are it always it's lesbians and it's trans men that are leading us? And what are they? What are their position in this? As we've been going on with the training, I uh, had, hadn't believed that they had the skills mm -hmm. um, to do this type of work. And what we've been talking about throughout these um, day and a half now has been that uh, people come to the table with the skills to do this, whether it's storytelling, whether it's um, documentary to video, photography, um, all of these things. So we're kind of trying to step outside the box in terms of academic research, which is very important, but we also have to integrate all other kinds of um, research that are very valid. Building and capacitating these women to actually be spoken, to be very vocal, to be very free, to be very confident and sure of exactly who they are, what they are, what they stand for, such that at a point where now we trying to really build this movement. It has individuals in it that are strong like any other chess pieces that go on, 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 a, on a chess board. I think we need to work on a language that we all understand. Um, and might not be the same language, um, but a language, an ethos rather, that we all understand and that all, and we all feel like it captures us. What I found beneficial is just the array of topics that were explored and the possibilities and also just on a productive note is just how much there needs to be done. I think, you know, individually we're doing a lot, but on a collective basis, like there's so much information that still needs to be, um, you know, brought forward and also stories to be told and how people are experiencing their transness and, and how it's different in different places. I think we must be very keen to have those spaces that connect connect us, keep us keep the communication, uh, exchange the tools, the experiences, everything, and make make sure that we rotate. So so next time in the next trans health conference it shouldn't be me maybe it should be other three individuals i love to be able to tell people um in the united states and in europe that the country with the best um trans related legal framework in the world is argentina because i think that people yeah. assume that it's you know basically a white country it would either be the u.s or it would be europe or sweden or whatever um, and it's it's not the case, uh, you know. It's it's South America. It's sort of global South, uh, a country with a colonization history. I think that's really cool to be able to say. I don't know when, but I wish one day will be like over these issues, and maybe we're discussing. We're like in a genderless world, or I don't know. I'm very dreamy, so I don't know. And, but that keeps me going on. Otherwise, I'll be like really depressed and committing suicide. So it's, it's good to have this dreamy part. Yeah, but that's it. There's so many ways in which we can, we can make visibility happen. So I think um, despite those challenges, we still have to make media in that way. We have to tell our stories. Um, we have to find ways of connecting our issues so that they're not so insulated, so that it doesn't become an Eastern Cape problem. It becomes a glo global problem. It's not a South African issue or a Tanzania issue. It's a regional issue.